Hello, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with attorney Brian uh, D. Lerner. In this particular episode, I'd like to somewhat continue uh, with a description of what goes into when uh, one of the spouses dies uh, when there was originally a marital trust or a regular, essentially, living trust. Um, and there's other videos I've done with, you know, what goes into the surviving trust and the disclaimers trust. But there, the there's another one, uh, which is called the credit trust, uh, or the B trust, or the exemption trust. I mean, it, it goes by different names, but uh, the purpose here is to understand that when it goes into the credit trust, uh, that that is what the uh, person who deceives the spouse who deceased uh, wanted to go in there and you know uh, what what goes right away is that person portion of the community property and by that person I'm talking about the deceased person and also uh, their separate property so for sure is that all goes in there um, again this can sometimes be called the B-chart, the bypass trust, the credit shelter trust um, it could also be called the exemption trust, the exemption equivalent trust. Um, so, you know, it has, it has different names to it. Um, it could also be called the decedent trust, which, you know, that makes it quite clear who it belongs to. Uh, and so, in this particular case, with the credit trust, um, it is necessary to understand that, uh, you know, unless it's specifically stated otherwise, that part uh, will become the irrevocable part of the trust, uh, or part of the sub-trust, whereas the survivor's trust is revocable. And clearly the reason it's irrevocable is because the person who's deceased can't stand up and say, uh, well, by the way, I want to change this, I want to change that, or I, you know, I, I, I want this to go to that beneficiary instead, or I want to exclude another beneficiary. Or I you know, don't want it to go to my children, I want it to go to your children, whatever the situation is, um, it clearly is irrevocable because it's to protect the wishes of the person who died, okay? Otherwise, uh, there would be uh, no protection at all and anything that they wanted to do or to have, for example, to go to their kids uh, would not happen or, you know, might be diverted another way. So, for example, you know, your husband and wife, uh, they own two houses, let's say, and one of the houses, they agree that w the first one that dies, uh, that house will then go into the uh, B trust, uh, the decedent's trust, um, and it will be irrevocable so that the surviving spouse, let's say, can live there for the rest of his or her life without owning it anymore, but they can live there. And then, once they die, it will then be uh, transferred to the children um, and, and if this was not irrevocable then maybe the surviving spouse would get married again and would have more kids and would decide well you know I, I think I want to share this house with my new children and the children whom my deceased spouse wanted to have her with and of course the deceased spouse probably would not have wanted that to have gone forward so that's how uh, the irrevocability of the B trust works Okay, more, uh, if, you, if you like the video, click like, subscribe, and also uh, there are plenty of other estate videos, and you can call my office for a free consultation uh, anywhere in California. Okay, more on the coming videos.